Thank you guys for joining our camper van life Q&A today. We're going to talk about RV solar and living off grid. Mm -hmm. And as always, if you're joining us live, we'd love to know where you're tuning in from. So leave us a note. And before we get started, I just want to say um, if you have general questions about living in a van, we've answered a lot of those in a previous Q&A, which you can find in our Camper Van Life series video playlist. Um, so if you have questions about MPG for the van, where do we shower, how do we shower, what is the layout of the van like, tank capacity, all of those more how general questions. How much coffee do I drink? That uh, have been answered. So check out that video. And today we'll focus on RV solar and living off grid. Yep. Hit me. I'm ready. <laughs> Everyone wants to know, what kind of RV solar setup do we have in the van? Okay. Uh, our solar setup, we have 320 watts of solar on the roof. Now, those 320 watts of solar feed energy into our 400 amp hours of lithium ion batteries. Those batteries, or I should say, we get the electricity from those batteries to all of our appliances and our outlets through a 2000 watt inverter. We also have some 12 volt appliances. Uh, our refrigerator, for example, is 12 volt and 110. So if I turn on the inverter, it'll switch over. Um, but most of the stuff in here is 110. So we're able with the inverter on to charge all of our devices and things like that. All right, next question, which is also another popular one. Okay. Can you run the air conditioner off solar? Ooh, this is a good one. Um, yes and no. You cannot run, you actually can't run anything off of solar. So we've gotten this question a lot, and I try to correct that question by saying we run everything off of our batteries. The solar is there to charge the batteries. So again, solar charges the batteries, the batteries are what run everything else in the van. Now, the AC does run directly off the batteries. And since we don't necessarily need solar to do that, we can run the AC at night. Um, the biggest benefit of having solar with the batteries is that while we're running the AC, charging our laptop, all of our devices, or things like that, um, the solar helps offset the loss from the battery. Um, you know, or keep it charged if we're not using anything at all. Now. How do you run the Instant Pot without plugging into shore power? Another popular question. Uh, same way we run the AC or any of our devices. We turn on the inverter. The inverter gets all of our outlets in here working and Kate can plug the Instant Pot right in. Now, we have the Duo Mini, correct? Well, we downsized our Instant Pot. Yes, we downsized everything, including our Instant Pot. <laughs> so we now have the Duo Mini, which okay. is three quarts. And I would say, on average, I use the Instant Pot once a day, most days, twice a day, to either steam food or make stew soups and stews. Mm -hmm. um, but the bigger Instant Pot was 1,500 watts. Uh, the smaller one, I believe, is 750. It's, un it's definitely under 1,000. Uh, so that is a smaller draw on our batteries, another reason why we really like it. And for the most part, we weren't using the full size. But yes, we can, we can run the Instant Pot off of our batteries. Now, why didn't we get a generator for the van? Another popular question. Um, we didn't get a generator because we don't need one. Uh, this van, Heimer in particular, comes with a secondary alternator. It's a 280 amp hour gen or alternator and we use this to charge our battery as well as the solar. So on very cloudy days or even at night if we've used too much electricity, all we have to do is turn the engine on and that'll start charging the battery. Uh, most of the time our battery is charged when we're running our errands or going into town, things like that. But we also have Volt Start. A lot of people have asked about Volt Start, whether we use it and how it works. Volt Start is a system that it's just a switch, you turn it on, and it will sense when the battery gets down to a certain level. Um, once it hits that level, Volt Start will turn the engine on, run for 35 minutes, charge the battery up, and then shut down. Once your battery drops down again, it'll run through that whole cycle for five times before you have to physically put a key in the ignition, turn the ignition on to reset the system. Yeah. 
which leads to another question. Since we do have the Volt Start system, a lot of people have been asking for feedback. How is it working out for us? Uh, it's been working great. It's very easy to use. The only thing you have to do is turn the switch on and make sure the two front doors are closed and it'll automatically come on. It's actually startled us a few times. We've been sitting here working uh, on a very cloudy day or at night if we've been using the instant pot a lot that'll draw the battery down and all of a sudden the engine will turn on and we'll jump or something and I'll have to remind Kate it's volt start don't worry. Uh, I just have to take a quick pause because John from Facing West Coffee Roasters oh. is here and watching our live stream. Hold on. And John, you don't understand. Joe is in a very dark place. <laughs> he had run out of really good coffee and your shipment, that's what he's drinking right now. This stuff is awesome. I'm actually drinking the Geisha right at this moment. This is what's keeping me powered. <laughs> it's what's getting us through the live stream, mm -hmm. or at least this guy. <laughs> yeah, let me put this back, keep it safe. <laughs> All right. I just, sorry, I had to stop because I saw John was joining us. So, hi, John. Thank you. I, uh, I really appreciate it. I was in a dark place. <laughs> All right, back on track. Um, so another really popular question is how people want to know, and they ask all the time, how much solar they should get for their RV. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good question. Uh, but I have to say it depends. It's really more about how you camp what you plan to use in your RV, be it a trailer, a van, a Class A, whatever, and how much electricity you plan to use. So for us, in our, when we had our Class A, we had a 29-foot motorhome, and we had a 100-watt uh, portable solar panel, so we didn't have any solar on the roof or anything. We were actually able to boondock with that for up to 10, 12 days and never have to run the generator. But at the same time, we also had to conserve our energy there was no way we could have run the instant pot without turning the generator on uh, because our inverter couldn't handle it. Uh, we also had to be very cautious about when we charge devices, turn lights on, things like that. We used to use candles. Um, and if you're fine with that, a small portable panel might work for you. With the van, we have this huge solar array, big battery bank, and huge inverter, which means we can do whatever we want and we don't have to worry about it. I would say personally, after this experience, anything else we get going forward, I would want to put as many batteries and solar on the roof as possible, which is another important thing to rem remember. It's not just about the solar. It's also about your battery bank. Is your battery bank going to be big enough to handle all the solar you want to put on the roof? It's an important question and something to consider. And having the right system helps us stay off grid. Yes. So a lot of people want to know how often do we plug into shore power and if we even plug in when we're at a campground. Mm -hmm. um, we really don't have to plug in. Uh, there are times when we go to campgrounds, we don't plug in at all because it's not necessary. When we do plug in, there have been some times like when we were up in Oregon. Uh, it was overcast, we just weren't getting very much solar, and we weren't driving around much. So we wanted to plug in so we could use the electric heater. For that, it was great, and it worked well. Um, otherwise, we would have had to have run the engine. So, But otherwise, with the solar, with our secondary alternator, we never have to plug in. Which is really nice. It is. I like not having to worry about that, whereas... We used to worry a bit more when we were in the Class A. Yeah, and something to think about. When we were in the Class A and we had a full-size generator, uh, there was one night where we had to run the generator all night long because it was so hot and humid outside. And after that, I calculated how much gas we had used for the generator and said that it would have been cheaper for us to go spend a night at a campground, plug in, and run our AC than it was running the generator all night. So it's another thing to consider. Does the system charge well on a cloudy day? Yes. Uh, you don't get as much of a charge, but as long as the sun is out, you will get some. Um, I've noticed we'll even get a charge when we're semi in the shade. Some of the reflected light, things like that will help, but it's really not going to do much other than you know trying to keep the batteries topped off. I would say consider that more like a trickle charge. Uh, how do we keep Leo cool in the van? Oh, Leo. He's passed out in the back right now. Otherwise, we'd put him on camera for you guys. Um, 
we either so what we're doing right now it's 94 degrees outside last i checked well it's mid 80s now well mid 80s okay um we are parked in the shade next to a building so that's keeping us cool we have the windows open the sunroof is open and the fan on that keeps the van really cool and comfortable now if we're going to be parked in the sun uh, away from the van and it's hot what we do is we switch on um, volt start turn the inverter on and then turn the ac on because that ac with a fully charged battery will probably run us about two to three hours couple hours and once it draws the battery down far enough volt start will kick on and we could be away from the van for hours and not have to worry mm -hmm. but when it is that hot we don't like to leave in case something happened let's say the air conditioner stopped working whatever it is we don't want to be away too long one important thing to think about is this van in particular but rvs in general tend to be a lot better insulated than your standard car so i know a lot of people freak out and say you know if it's 80 degrees outside your car is going to turn into an oven that is correct in a van at least you can open windows our windows are double paned we have very good insulation in here so it'll actually stay cooler in the van than it is outside great and then two more questions about solar so if someone wants to know how our solar panels hold up during a hailstorm okay we did encounter a hailstorm at crater lake uh, and then also whether our RV solar system is standard or an aftermarket add-on. Got it. Okay. Uh, hail. So our we were in Crater Lake. Yep. And got into a bad hail storm. The solar was fine. Uh, I would say if it was any bigger, you might start to run into a problem. We weren't getting golf ball sized hail, but I think if hail is going to be enough to dent. Uh, you know, a metal, the metal skin of a car, it might be enough to damage the solar panels. So, you know, I don't know if there's a way to protect them by throwing a sheet or something over a blanket to help, but I wouldn't want to be in a large hailstorm. No, and we, when we were in a bad hailstorm in Wisconsin, in the Jeep, we couldn't help the Class A motor home, but yeah. we drove the Jeep into a, a covered garage mm -hmm. so that we could protect the, the top. Yep. from getting damaged. So I guess if there was a really bad hailstorm and we could find a covered parking area that would accommodate our van, we could go there. Yeah, we we actually had friends uh, that had an Airstream at the time and they took it to a gas station that was closed. So they pulled into the gas station, they stayed there until the hailstorm passed. Uh, now the other question, are, the other question was, are our solar panels standard? Did they come with the van or did we build the system aftermarket? So the system we have on here is completely from the factory. Oops, sorry. They installed all the panels, uh, they installed the volt start system, and they have the, or they installed the batteries in the back and everything else. Uh, the system with Hymer and Roadtrek is called Ecotrek. Volt Start is their proprietary system, so you can order that all from them from the factory. Yep. And I just want to say, I noticed the chat is going really fast, so if you guys have a question that you really want us to answer during the live stream, check out the Super Chat option. Um, but I'm going to switch gears and talk more about off-grid living. Uh, okay. But I do want to take take a moment to say hi to Christina. She said that she's enjoying your book very much. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So... First question about sort of off-grid living is how do you get drinking water as you travel? Uh, so we we fill up our tank from standard uh, you know hose bibs. A lot of times we find those at gas stations, businesses that will allow us to fill up, friends and family's house, or we'll go to a campground and fill up on water, something like that. A lot of dump stations have them as well, but you have to be careful. You want to fill up with the potable water, don't use non-potable because you don't know what's been on that hose bib or anything else or where that water is coming from. Um, but that said, we like to filter and purify all of our water. So actually, you can't really see it, but right behind me is the is our Berkey. We fill all of the water from our tank into our Berkey, which purifies it, and we use that as our drinking water. And someone would like to know how long we can stay off-grid. Ooh, um, that really depends. 
So I would say if we had a full tank of fresh water, empty cassette, uh, empty gray water tank, and a lot of food, we could probably stay out for a few weeks. A lot of people have asked us how long the cassette will last if we're boondocking somewhere since the cassette's so small. As long as we have a place to go outside, dig a hole, and use the bathroom, we don't have to worry about the cassette filling up. So at that point, we're really more worried about how much fresh water we have. And that's going to decrease not, not only from our drinking, washing dishes, and if we're really staying off grid, taking showers in here. I've done it. It works. Um, and it actually doesn't use a lot of water, I have to say. Well, it depends on how much water you want to use. <laughs> this is true. Um, but that's really the limiting factor is water. Or if we're, not, if we're not in a place where we can go outside to go to the bathroom, probably a couple days with the cassette because that's going to fill up pretty quickly. Um, but a lot of times we don't like to stay out that long. I would say, you know, three, four days, and then we're probably driving into town. Um, you know, we might dump the cassette there grab some more water, food, things like that, and then go back out. I, we've never really just stayed out someplace. Not for very long. No. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, with winter coming, we've been getting a lot of questions about um, doing off-grid winter camping, and are we able to do it? Ye well, yes, we can, uh, but we would have to drain the tanks and winterize the van. Uh, we haven't done that because we like to have the tank of water for washing dishes, flushing the toilet, and things like that. Also, our drinking water. Um, but we've been down to 27 degrees up in Flagstaff. That's the coldest so far. Yep. Uh, we don't run the furnace. I like to keep the propane for my coffee. And if we ran the propane down and I ran out of or wasn't able to heat water for my coffee, I would be in dire straits. Uh, so what we do is when it's cold in the van, we just throw an extra sweatshirt on. Uh, we will ha we have a down comforter along with extra blankets and we'll cuddle up at night, stay nice and warm. Leo loves the cold. So there have been times I've checked the thermostat in the uh, van and it's been 37 degrees in here. <laughs> he is happy, let me tell you. Uh, but in the morning when I wake up, boil some water for coffee, Kate's tea, it'll start warming the van up pretty quickly. And then as the sun comes out, we just open the windows and that warms the van right up. So we've been good. Yeah. And I think a lot of people asked when we first got the van, why did we choose a dark color? Um, wouldn't it be better to have a lighter color van? And I will say that comes in handy when it's a cold day mm -hmm. and the sun really, the paint, the up. darker paint really absorbs the sun and it warms up faster. Yeah. I will say it's easier to run from the heat sometimes. Um, it's harder to run from the cold as we found. And I, I like the ability to warm the van through the outside. Does come in handy. All right, a big question, especially for us since we work on the road, um, and a lot of people want to know what we do for a living. And if you haven't watched that video, we did make one about how we make money on the road, so check that out. Um, but it's internet access. How do we get internet access when we travel? Okay. We are using a Verizon Unlimited plan. Now, for those of you who saw our quick little Facebook Live thing, I did mention that unlimited doesn't mean unlimited. So we found that after you hit a certain point with Verizon, they will start throttling you. Uh, we're using our phones as hotspots. So all of the things that we're putting up online, this, uh, for example, is sucking down data like none other. Anytime we upload our videos, they're anywhere from four to five gigs. And between the two of us, for our hotspot data, we have a total of 30 gigabytes, so 15 per phone. Um, and that goes really quickly. Last month, we ran out and we were in the middle of uploading a video. Uh, I had to call and beg them to give us some extra data. So we're actually looking at getting a secondary plan, uh, either a Verizon hotspot or go with a different provider so that we have more data. Uh, but I will say that is actually becoming a very big expense of ours. Yeah, trying yeah. to get good internet. Because a video that we upload on a Wednesday can range anywhere from 4 to 5 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. And that eats through our plan really fast. It does. And I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons who are watching this on Patreon. Uh, you guys are awesome and you're helping us cover the cost of that and actually upgrade our data. So we really appreciate that. Yes. 
And I definitely know Roberto is joining us, so. What's up, Hi. Roberto? Uh, all right. Uh, one, one of our patrons actually had a specific question about our uh, RV Weeboo setup. Okay. Is how do we, where do we have the antennas? Where is everything? And how far do you have to put your phone next to the antenna to get the signal boost? Okay. Uh, let's see. So when I set up WeBoost, I do it in a couple different ways. We got originally the RV uh, setup that WeBoost sells, uh, but I also have a few other little accessories that I've picked up. Um, when we don't need like super internet, I have the little magnetic antenna on top of the van, and I actually store right above our heads here is where the booster goes. And then the inside antenna comes right down onto this table. Um, I have to say though, for those of you who don't know what WeBoost is and have no idea what I'm talking about, it is a cell phone uh, booster, cell signal booster. And what this does is when we're out places boondocking or just in cities that have really bad cell coverage, this will take, even if you have just a minuscule amount of cell data, it'll take that, boost it, and many times to a working signal. So it's gotten us out of trouble a lot of times. Um, if we can't get that, then we have to drive in town, find a place with Wi-Fi or something like that. Now, when we're really out in the middle of nowhere and I need a good signal, I have their large trucker's antenna. And what I did was I rigged up a little clamp that goes on to a suction cup mount like they use for GoPros and things like that and I stick it on the back of the van. Um, I put that, run the cord through one of the windows or the doors, and then I put the antenna back here or actually over on the sink to my right. Um, a lot of times we're tethering from the phone, so we put the phone right next to the antenna for the best signal, but we've been five or six feet away from the antenna and it's worked fine. It just I notice as I get closer, you get a better signal. And I will say the Wii Boost, like you said, has saved us quite a few times. And mm -hmm. I definitely can't imagine not having it doing what we're doing, which is traveling all the time. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Now, to go back to the solar aspect, um, there were a few questions people want to know since we have the 400 amp hours of lithium ion battery okay. in our van, there is the 800 amp hour option. Would we consider upgrading? I don't think so. I know Road Trek offers the 800 amp hour option. I don't think they offer it yet for Hymer. I haven't I'm not seen sure. it. Um, we could be wrong. It could be something they offer now. Um, if they offered it, would we do it? I would actually say probably not. And the reason for that being with Volt Start um, and with the battery pack we have now, we're good. Um, my concern with adding more battery would be that you have a lot more weight now. Um, and we just, we simply don't need it. I mean, 400 amp hours of the lithium batteries last us a long time. If we had no sun, we could probably go, I would say, three or four days without having to start the engine and recharge. Um, so it's, it's impressive how well they work. And... I would say if we were switching to something that had AGM batteries, I would probably want more AGM batteries because you can only draw an AGM battery down to 50% before it's time to recharge without damaging it. The lithium batteries, you can go, I think it's 10 to 20%. So you get a lot, they're a lot more efficient and they work much better. Okay. I think we're going to switch gears and take a few off topic questions. Ooh. Yes. But someone else mentioned that they're in the process of reading your book and they're very excited. Awesome. So for everyone watching who's purchased or in the process of reading our book or read it already, thank you. I guess now's as good a time as any to plug the book. So <laughs> there it is. Take Risks, One Couple's Journey to Quit Their Jobs and Hit the Open Road. It's pretty much available everywhere. You can get it on paperback and Amazon. And for everyone who's bought it, read it, and reviewed it, Guys, thank you so much. It's awesome. I wrote this as kind of, um, you know, I wanted to share a story and I didn't know if anyone would actually read it and let alone enjoy it. And to see all the positive, you know, thoughts and things that have come back about the book, I really appreciate it. And I did see, I caught a glimpse of a question about composting toilets. If you're, if you read the book 
or you're going to read the book, there's a really funny chapter about that. There is a chapter <laughs> in the book about how we, um, or Kate came up with the idea to do a homemade composting toilet. We were looking at buying one. And that experiment was very interesting. Yes. It so. went horribly wrong. So... Please. A lot of people have gotten a good laugh out of it. Mm -hmm. At my expense. Yes. And I had a good laugh rereading it. So did I. <laughs> and to everyone who's read the book or you're reading it, I'm actually in the middle of working on book two. I'm hoping to have it out early next year. Okay. So uh, one of our patrons wanted to ask us about, since we switched and how we eat, um, a lot of you who have been following us for you know, a long time mm -hmm. when we were in the class A or even earlier this year, we were eating very differently. And our patron wants to know like what our calorie consumptions are now because we, we are eating so differently. <laughs> um, so mine, I got to a point, I found uh, my, what's known as your maintenance calories. Uh, I'm around 1800. So if I eat 1800 calories a day, I won't gain or lose any weight. Uh, when I was losing weight, so I've lost about 40 to 45 pounds since February. And a lot of people don't believe me, but if you go back and watch some of the older videos, it's pretty apparent. Um, but when I was doing that, I, I got down to 1,500 calories a day. I tried not to go below that. Um, I've started working out again and quite heavily. So on days like that, I try to stay in the mid-2000s if not a bit more. And I try to go heavier on the protein as well. You? I don't eat. No, she really doesn't. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place and I really don't track it that much since I've been, so I eat more whole plant-based, mm -hmm. uh, more so than Joe. Joe will eat more uh, like dairy, eggs, and things like that, whereas I'm mostly plant-based and I'm sort of all over the place, anywhere from 1,400 calories up to 2,000 calories. It kind of depends on the day. I would say you're... But you're I'm, about, I eat as much as I want till I'm full. Yeah. And I enjoy the food. So that's one thing I really like about it. And a lot of people have been begging me to eat what they call real food. So burgers, <laughs> pizza, things like that. Um, you'll see some of that in an upcoming video. And I've... I kind of have... I don't want to say I've made it a habit, but for the last two months in a row, on the 10th, I've had a burger. And not only a burger, my first burger was, it was a bacon cheeseburger, half pound patty, and it was just absolutely amazing. And that was on my birthday. It was on your birthday. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, today's the 22nd, so on the 10th, um, I had a, a brisket burger. So it was a burger with brisket, barbecue sauce, and onion rings. <laughs> Um, so when I go off the reservation, I really take a ride for a while and get far away from it. <laughs> um, and you know what? I've realized that there are things in this world like barbecue ribs that I'm going to have every now and again. I don't care. Yeah. It's nice to have a balance. But for the most part, I really enjoy the way we're eating. I've lost weight. I feel great. So I'm happy with it. Yeah. All right. Back to questions. So someone at wants to know. Since we're spending 24 hours a day together all year, what do we talk about? Well, actually, so it's a it's movie magic. <laughs> um, this line right here, she's in a different van. I'm here, and I'm able to like split them together. <laughs> um, you know, it's really about communication. Um, we keep from killing each other by talking all the time, and by talking all the time, <laughs> we keep it interesting. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of our conversations are about work, this YouTube channel, you know, what are we going to make next for you guys and that sort of thing. Uh, we talk a lot about where we're going, what we want to do, um, and sometimes just about our day. So, you know, when we used to get home from work, we would sit down and talk about our day. Actually, we didn't because we didn't want to talk about our day. Now it's kind of fun to talk about our day. So we'll recap things that happened, um, talk about what we want to do the following day. Um, and you know what? Sometimes we don't talk. Uh, we might lay in bed with our phones and each watch a different movie on Netflix or something like that. and just Read on our Kindle? Yeah, and just kind of space out for a while. Um, I think a really good investment for a van are those over-the-ear 
headphones because she can listen to her music, your meditation stuff that drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. and, and you can like watch that. TV up front without bothering me in the bedroom. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's all about managing those things. I know people that need to get away for a while, take a run, something like that. Mm -hmm. We don't need it. We're happy being around each other, but we do need our own quiet time. Yeah. And then every once in a while when we go to the gym, sometimes I just don't feel like getting a workout in. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather hang out in the van with Leo. So you'll get a workout in and that's sort of your private time. It is. Time. But a lot of times we go and we work out together. That's yeah. that's where your guns are going from. Working out, getting my muscles. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? Oh, the chats are going so fast. Um, oh, someone wants to know if we can convert the van's bathroom into something else, what would it be? I would just, if we were designing our own van, I wouldn't want a bathroom. I would just want one of those little toilet or porta potties you can pull out. And I would use it just to have more open space. I think that's one thing I really like is having the open space with the windows and everything around. Um, I wouldn't want this wall behind me. I would just want a nice open space into the bedroom, maybe add another window, um, a little cabinet or something, you know, to put stuff on. Mm -hmm. That's really about it. Simple. And I do want to say hi to Al Ewers. It's good to hey, have Al. you on the live stream. Al's an awesome patron of ours. And I know a few people have been asking about the Instant Pot Cookbook again. It's on the list. We, the problem <laughs> is we have so many things we're trying to do. Uh, for those of you who watched our live stream about how we make money, uh, you saw that we probably spend about 60 hours a week working. And that is on YouTube, everything else we're doing with our website. I'm writing a book. Kate is working on things. So it takes a lot of time. There's a lot of front and back end work to make a video and you know, follow comments, put it up on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram. Oh, if you guys are on Instagram, we're the Russos. Follow us. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, I've got to do my clothes. Yes, do your so clothes. I'm going to do this completely off the cuff. If I screw it up, I'll try it again. You guys feel free to laugh at me. Okay, <clears throat> let's do this. All right, next time. Join us as we head to Costco and we show you why 90 square feet of van is not a reason you can't buy in bulk. So we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys.